How often have you finished your day, look back at what you've achieved and thought, Jesus Christ, what the hell have I done with the day? I honestly think it's the most depressing feeling to go to bed at night thinking, I've just filled my day with meaningless shit that doesn't matter. The good news is it doesn't have to be like this. In this video, I'm gonna teach you an incredibly simple technique to prioritize your tasks using Notion. This technique's gonna make it very clear to you what's important and what's not important, so you can go to bed at night with that really satisfied feeling that today I've made progress towards my projects and towards my goals. Hey you guys, how's it going? For those new to the channel, my name's Tom and here we talk about how you can use Notion to solve real life problems. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, bang subscribe and you're gonna be notified when I release new weekly videos. Today's gonna to be all about prioritizing tasks in Notion. First, we're gonna to get to the root cause as to why we don't get meaningful stuff done in our day before looking at the Notion system that we can utilize to make sure we do get that meaningful stuff done. Do you use to-do lists to get things done? Good, I want you to take that to-do list, scrunch it up and throw it in a bin. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but I honestly think that to-do lists are the root cause for filling our days with meaningless shit. The fundamental truth is that when you look at a to-do list, it's just a series of tasks with no priority. As tasks come up, you add them to your to-do list and like the diligent robot that you are, you work through them one by one, except you don't. Our brains are hardwired for dopamine hits, you know, whether we go out and eat or take some exercise or have sex. But one surprising thing that also gives you a dopamine hit is crossing off an item on your to-do list. Seriously, it's backed by science. This is a problem because we get the same dopamine hit whether we do a 10 minute task or a two hour task. So replying to those urgent but not important emails is probably gonna give you the same dopamine release as if you were to work really diligently for two hours on a complex problem. And our brains are always in this constant battle between doing what we know deep down is important and what we should be working, but then our brains and our monkey minds kind of overtake this and say, no, this is gonna give me a quick dopamine hit. It's only gonna take 10 minutes. Let's do that instead. So what's the solution to this? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We just take away the decision-making element from our list. We prioritize our lists in a smart way so that we work through things in the order of importance, not in the way that we feel like it. Let's take a look how. So this is the prioritization method that I use for tasks. And I'll leave a template in the description if you wanna check it out, but let's have a look through how this baby works. So in the first column, we just have the tasks. It's pretty clear. You write down what you're gonna do. Maybe you link this up to your GTD system or your project system, whatever it might be. The important thing here is that you just have the task logged. Now in here we have the value that this task is going to provide and I set this between 1 and 10. Again this just kind of takes some of the decision making out of it to have these numbers already in here pre-selected and the idea is that when you create your task you're just going to assign a value to it. So obviously we've got answering emails here as one pretty low importance, pretty low value task but then writing this blog post, that's a seven. So just think of a number between one and 10 as to how important that task is gonna be and put it in the value column. Now the next thing we have is story points and this is something that I use as a product manager on a daily basis and the idea of a story point is it's just a kind of way to estimate the amount of effort or work that's gonna be required to deliver this task. Now the reason that we use story points is because as humans, especially if we're doing a task that we've never done before, we're actually very bad at estimating the time. If you gave me a problem to solve at work, I might think, okay, I can do that in two hours, but we've all been in that situation where six hours down the line, we're still working at it, and this is just because we're generally quite bad at estimating things, unless we've repeatedly done them many times before. And story points try and help give us a more realistic prediction of how long a task is gonna be taking. Now, story points work in what's called a Fibonacci sequence. This sounds a bit complicated, but it's really not. The idea is that in a Fibonacci sequence, it goes one, two, three, five, eight. Basically, the last two numbers always add up to make the next number that comes in the sequence. 
And the reason we use the Fibonacci sequence is because it's very difficult for us to make a distinction between what's say a nine effort, a 10 effort or 11 effort. They're all sort of in the same ballpark. But the Fibonacci sequence allows us to actually make a clear distinction that actually it's either got to be an eight or a 13 or a 21. And obviously a 21 is you know over twice what an eight is and a 13 is going to be sort of three times what a five is. So I just assigned the story points like so. I mean, you know, answering emails here, it's, it's a one. The blog post for me is gonna be a three. The business plan is gonna be a five. You all equate this in your head to kind of rough hours of work. It's just how we think. But yeah, that's the idea that you put these story points in there. Now this here is the most important column, the priority. Now the formula for this is a bit mad because in Notion's infinite wisdom they've decided that you can't do a calculation on a selector, you can only do it on numbers, um, which I don't know if there's probably a reason for that. So what I'm doing here is I'm converting all of these for you into numbers, so actually definitely get the template because this is not a fun job. And then we're just dividing the value over the story points to get a rough priority and then we're doing some rounding as well. And then all we're doing is sorting the priority in descending order. So the top priority tasks are gonna be done first and the lowest priority tasks are gonna be moved to the bottom. Now, one thing to bear in mind when working in this way is you don't need to become like a complete slave to the system. This is just a way to prompt you to prioritize things. And if you're working on your own and you've got no deadlines or dependencies, it's an incredible way to work. What you might often find though is your manager at work or someone that you're working with needs a piece of work done by a certain time. So what you could do in that case is either bang the value up or just manually move the item to the top of the task list. It's really up to you how you feel like doing that. But yeah, I mean, this is an incredibly simple way. It'll take you two or three minutes to set it up and is 10 times better than a to-do list because you can really clearly see the priority of what you're doing. You could also use a board view for this if you wanted, like here, where you've got to do, doing and done. And again, you can sort it so that the most important items are gonna be moved to the top and the least important items are gonna be moved to the bottom. So hopefully that's a really quick way that you can supercharge your productivity in Notion by prioritizing your to-do list. If you like that video, I'm gonna leave another one here for you to check out. But I'm really curious to hear, do you think I was too harsh on a normal to-do list? Do you use them really Religiously and find them really helpful or do you find yourself getting swamped with this unimportant highly urgent work that often causes us to finish the day not feeling great but thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your day